And now we're at the top of the hour. So I'm gonna introduce Boris, who's gonna be talking about modernizing New York City's radio news. So without further ado, take it away, Boris. All right. Hi guys, um, my name is Boris. Um, let me just get this going. And I'll be talking about some of the work we did for um, iHeartMedia. This was uh, a couple of years ago, so I had to go back and retrace some steps and figure out uh, some of the things. Uh, so a little bit background. Um, I have been doing Drupal since about 2005. Uh, my original back, uh, design is actually, um, sorry, <laughs> my original background is in design and visual arts, but I kind of moved slowly over the years from kind of uh, right brain front end uh, art uh, kind of things into more and more back end. Um, and I've been trying to balance it out. Um, I have worked um, for a number of organizations, Metropolitan Museum of Art and Wayo Langone. I heart uh, did uh, recently a little work for NJ Transit, not for them specifically, but for a project for their new site. Um, and I do a lot of uh, consulting. Um, uh, so I, that's how I uh, generally tend to work uh, at one uh, company to another. So we'll move it on. All right. Um, so yeah, this is just a little slide just to say uh, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, try and tackle it, just kind of where, uh, what, when, and how. Um, just as a reminder, there's not much here. Um, right, so it was, I think this is kind of an interesting part of it. Um, so this was not the first project we were doing at iHeartMedia, I think that was probably Fourth, um, and the background um, of the situation there is that um, they uh, entered a contract with Acquia, um, and Acquia sold them onto uh, their a AW, a um, uh, on-site factory products. Um, so out of that, well, it's a you know very robust and powerful product for enterprise. Um, for them, it was kind of uh, interesting combinations because they didn't really have internal Drupal talent. Um, and not to mention that ACSF, I think this must have been like their first uh, uh, Drupal 8 client on ACSF. So as we were getting into that, there was a lot of kind of uh, things, a lot of trying to figure out how to make things work. Drupal 8 was still kind of uh, very new. I probably was working for about a year uh, at that point. And another thing was BLT. Uh, if people are familiar, it's the, the build tests, uh, you know, uh, framework that Acquia. Not, now it's pretty commonplace. It was kind of brand new then. Uh, I, I remember calling kind of support uh, or talking to support Acquia and being like, yeah, uh, we're trying to use BLT, and that was recommended for by an engineer, and be like, uh, "What is BLT?" <laughs> so there were some uh, comical situations like that. So um, there's a little background. So um, before this project, we did a number of things, kind of get acclimated there. We there was a Premier Prep, which is like a giant uh, counter rep repository that radio stations use for like. Uh, trivia data, um, that was a whole project unto it itself. Uh, we, we migrated some smaller sites like Premier Networks that has all, all the um, personalities like Rush Limbo and, uh, and other radio personalities on there. We migrated that from SharePoint to Drupal 8. So thankfully, and I was just, I've done a lot of Drupal 7 at that point, but I was getting my feet wet with that. Uh, we did some uh, better suited sites for ACSF, like the X of the week, where it was a very simple site that spun up from the profile for specific uh, locality, if you want, of their uh, market zones. Uh, and we also did a LinkedIn site um, for them, uh, which was uh, content distrib like a lead generation content distribution uh, platform. Um, I think we kind of rebuilt maybe Aqua Lift a little bit. I haven't worked with Aqua Lift actually, but 
Um, it was something along those lines. Um, so why Drupal? I think um, iHeart um, is a giant. It was actually iHeart Media, which is the parent organization, and they own uh, the iHeart, the radio stations, and they also own Clear Channel Outdoors. Uh, I mean, they had uh, some financial wrangling recently, but um, so because of that, they buy radio stations, they buy other companies that enter with their own kind of set of tools, and sometimes they kind of promote it to the to the larger organizations. Uh, sometimes they kind of um, uh, you know, uh, take one tool and adapt it to other places. Uh, but there's a lot of repeating stuff, many ways to do things. It's, it's uh, obvious. Uh, and Drupal kind of was the opportunity and the idea and the vision was that we build some of these tools um, in Drupal, like authentication mechanism uh, for like SAML authentication or a way to get our uh, radio stations list or get our uh, markets. They have, I think, uh, 150 uh, or something markets, which is, you know, there's uh, New York, there is Philadelphia, there's Texas, and then they're, they're also divided on regions and, uh, and things like that, and they, they serve in different places. So it was kind of the idea to create consistent ways for them. Uh, and that's why the product they got from Acker was ACSF. Uh, and we actually helped to build some of these elements. Um, and now TTWN uh, was um, one of the, I think it was the last uh, actual project we did there. Um, and you see a little screenshot there. Um, it looks like it's, it could be from Windows 3.1 <laughs> or 98. Uh, it's, I thought it was very interesting. There's a lot of, uh, uh, kind of uh, elements to the project uh, that were fascinating to me because I, you know, I don't know much about how giant radio networks or how the news are propagated uh, works. And um, I think that was one of the most um, exciting things about the project. There's a lot of legacy stuff, like you see this app, um, uh, you know, the color buttons, there's the categories, there's the format in which, um, the radio stations, the the reporters write these stories, uh, and they kind of post them on this wire that gets aggregated. I I, I probably I'm gonna uh, mention it a little bit further. Uh, that is the network. Then there is uh, stations, users, networks. There's the sales teams. So there's a lot of coordination that uh, happens. Um, and then there was uh, element of um, you know people been using this uh, app that was made years ago, but it's kind of idiosyncratic and it has its own things, but people have been using it for a long time and some people, frankly, didn't want it to go away. Um, I wasn't the one picking some of those fights. So, um, you know, I was just going with the flow. It was made easier for me, thankfully. Uh, and there was some uh, surprisingly old uh, hardware involved in some parts of it. Um, uh, and that was, um, you know, surprising because, you know, what, what, when we were building it, it runs well, even though there are some really, really old um, computers there. So the big thing was the this uh, AMPA format. Um, I have a quote there. You, I don't know if I could read it right off the slide. So it's standard format, I guess, that people in the news probably know about. Uh, the, the great part there underneath is the um, what you actually, what, what it looks like when you open one of those files in, in the, um, like an editor, uh, like a sublime text or something. It has like a carriage return type, special teletype. Um, it was developed for teletype and it's been around for a very long time. And it has all these symbols uh, in it uh, and characters that, you know, people who write it, they just write them. They don't, as far as I understand it, it's not like they have a tool that they're using. They just open Notepad and type all that stuff in and it's automatic. And it was interesting because when we had to go and write uh, uh, um, temp, uh, um, 
uh, modules to kind of interpret interpret this. It, it took some doing to actually go uh, and figure out to some people like, yeah, this is what we always use, but we don't know what these characters mean. Um, uh, yeah, so some highlights, special characters, uh, difficult uh, to sort through uh, for some of us. Uh, some of these uh, stories that come in in the format were also, um, they had audios attached uh, with them. So I think I have a slide. Yes, so the whole, the way the whole system worked, again, my knowledge of it was fairly limited, as fascinated as I was with it. So apparently there's like a network of fairly antiquated computers all over US. Um, uh, and people go in, in those rooms and they write the stories and they submit and then the, they save the file and somehow that gets kind of ftp to some server somewhere and it shows up on the uh the wire what they call and it's there's it's called link source or something like that so this is like constant form so every i don't know uh, five fifteen minutes there's new stories getting uploaded uh and then radio uh course had access to various interfaces to that wire um, to basically consume uh, this, uh, you know, news. Um, and another element uh, that goes into it is building kind of modernized version of interface to this news wire. There is sales reps that are calling uh radio stations i guess to 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 sell uh access um i i was kind of remote from some of these things so um if you ask me questions i might be able to answer but i can't guarantee it um so newswire content import was the big part of it um once we could figure out how the format operated which was <laughs> one of the challenges i think we you know i remember going for like days kind of waiting to figure out what one of those letters in the format meant or uh you know they they, they use special kind of shorthand to signify certain things like you have a opening print and then a couple of letters and then we need to know uh, what we uh, how we're going to turn that into a category or um you know, uh, something else, or is it indication that it's a local story or, or global or developing? Uh, so there was a lot of variables. Um, and then we have to figure out the mechanism to uh, how this would work. So we were talking to the stakeholders uh, and kind of I was, you know, several degrees removed from uh, some of these people. So, so uh, it was how, trying to come together and figure out how we're actually going to um, make that work. So this, this software, and I think one difficulty was, I'm not sure if I have it in one of the slides, but as we were developing it, the, the wire had to run and the protocol is eventually meant to uh, replace um, that, uh, that system with the new one that runs in the browser is responsible to be accessing the phones. But there is, was a fair amount of time of kind of overlay. So while we developed it, that kind of, it had to work in sync. So we couldn't just like rebuild it. We, what we were doing is kind of like in, injecting, uh, not injecting, but kind of siphoning off these uh, news stories and uh, putting them into more accessible interface, more or less. Um, yes, uh, stories from the wirehead, uh, you know, there's, categories there is developing news there's some breaking news uh they're broken down by locality um some of them uh, you know there's by state um and a few other uh also some of them i don't remember they had images but some of them definitely had audio um, so one of the things was so it's coming uh, as we're updating this is coming from a place where people were using um essentially desktop app and obviously in a desktop app everything is easier to do right because we have kind of to the core integration so um they could just edit text they could edit audio right in the app um and kind of consumption and the interaction was very close 
and we kind of um, we kind of had to strip some of this down. Another issue we had is that when news hosts prepare the stories for their show, like I have a 10 o'clock slot or something, um, often they want to take the story and they want to edit it and save it. And not only that, it might be actually not them, but somebody else uh, in the station might be preparing it and another person is doing it. So a story editor was one part of it where they made make adjustments and it doesn't go back to the wire it kind of it stays a localized story so we have to find a way to um, grab a story as soon as it's modified and make it kind of a shareable content um, yes we had a requirement to add audio editor but it just wasn't possible to make it happen did research had some leads uh, it was exciting um, if we could have done it but uh, ultimately we were not able to um so in the end that was uh there was basically two user levels that the sales will call whomever sell them on the account one account created that's the admin account and that's kind of a station main account and then they will go based on the number of users um, or, or however they will create sub accounts and those become station users. So I could be a person uh, looking at the stories. Another person could be putting them in and maybe a host in his uh, slot would actually go and, um, you know, read the, the generated, um, uh, they called it rundown. I think this only mentions a few uh, content from, I'm kind of switching uh, rather quickly here to, to Drupal perspective. Um, so as content types, I think there were a few more things there, but basically that was the, um, the story, uh, which is coming from the wire. They were basically just uh, imported and kind of kept. Uh, the local stories, if I start editing one of those stories, it immediately creates basically my local copy that is share, shared in the station, uh, but it's not saved back. And I hopefully I'll have a chance to show you. I actually uh, got in touch with some of the people and they let me have a demo account, so hopefully I can show it. Um, um, the news rundown, I think it changed names. We called it rundown, it was newscast. I think now it's called the script. Essentially what happens is, uh, a person grabs the stories and they kind of drag and drop them and edit and put things around um, uh, in their script in preparation of that's what they're going to read on the air. And that was called uh, Rundown. There was a lot of iterations uh, around um, that specific Rundown. So um, again, one thing was importing users. Um, essentially, we had to figure out uh, how this was going to happen uh, and we kind of i don't remember how it came about but essentially we said okay let's can you take uh, i think it was coming from salesforce and say can you basically come generate let's i said let's use a simple uh, queue service from amazon and they basically would every time they register a user or there was a change they would push it in and then we used a uh, uh, composer package for that. I don't remember specifically, but essentially we would, you know, to maintain kind of make sure we confirm that this user was created or deleted uh, or updated uh, based on subscription level. Uh, and then Drupal would build custom module that would basically run on cron and do that processing and kind of assign, reassign and create users as needed um one big thing was i thought um that challenge of how do we do it that content is kind of automatically shared within the station uh and we looked at drupal 8 groups which was brand new i have not i had experience with like organic groups and other uh, and forums kind of things in in previous versions of drupal but this was new and it was dramatically different uh but this is what we ended up using and i thought that was kind of awesome the way it worked it, it's kind of almost went uh with that idea that when i edit story it needs to 
basically create a local copy. Um, but there were, I remember being some hiccups, there were still uh, things not working. We kind of had to write some extra uh, parts of it uh, to really make it work. Um, but essentially that what handled, um, you know, that whole part of uh, being able to share the uh, content and uh, level of access for all the people in the station. Technology choices. Um, yeah, I think I was actually talking to one of the developers uh, yesterday and he said it's actually very different now. I think we started uh, with a uh, kind of combination almost like it started as being as much in Drupal as possible and then we kind of stripped away parts of it to make it more responsive and customized. Uh, switched a lot of the stuff to uh, JSON API and web services and basically it was just sending um, you know JSON to, to, to the front end and then it was getting lots of JavaScript doing all kinds of stuff. There was drag and drop, there was um, uh, a lot of script like uh, stripping um, characters and, and things like that. Um, I said React, but I think it was actually initially uh, a view app. Um, and now, as far as I understand, it's basically just almost plain JavaScript and whole lot of uh, API access to the back end. Um, custom editor for story, which I think we started with WYSIWYG, but it ended up being just completely almost, um, you know, completely different. Uh, it's not like you would bold things, but um, it would be like a, I, I'm not sure we could look at it yet, but you would click on just the story and it become like a editable area and then you would edit it. So it was kind of, there was no like save button. You just, as soon as you edit it, it becomes your instance. Um, I guess I covered groups already. Uh, technologies, again, there was a Salesforce involved, there was a Amazon uh, Simple Q. Um, there was uh, S3 for storing. So once we started uh, working with the wire, essentially they added somewhere a process that would copy all the stories that come in from the wire and save, save them as files into S3 bucket. Uh, and I don't remember how many, but a lot of them just go in all the time there. Uh, and some uh, stories come with audio, so the audio also went in um, into S3. And while stories, once we process them, kind of, they eventually get kind of expired. Uh, where with audio, they actually stay there because they need to be accessible if people even downloaded the story content into their local environment. Um, I guess. So Drupal 8, um, again, it's not React, it's Vue. Um, in the recent version, a lot of stuff apparently happens in the local storage while you're working inside the app. Um, so again, it's JavaScript, but it's basically while you're working, dragging storage around and, and doing stuff, it kind of saving it. Um, and then once you're done and you save it, it sends it back to Drupal and then it's accessible again. Um, I mentioned ACSF here because uh, Acquia, uh, what they bought is ACSF, uh, you know, side factory uh, product. But I think for this specific product, that wasn't really um, the best uh, technology because um, ACSF, I think, works best if you have uh, 100 stores and you want to make a store uh, that, that is more or less the same for, for every store. You want to make a website or you have uh, um, a localized kind of by locations. And so you're basically making same thing a bunch of times, but this was so unique that um, almost, you know, it was, uh, uh, it just kind of impeded some of the efforts because deploying on, on the ACSF, it impacts everything else that's on there. And I believe now it just runs on cloud, not, not, not on the ACSF anymore. Um, some of the application features, I think I cover a lot of them. Um, there is important the audio, there is important the stories, uh, important users from the Salesforce uh, and kind of creating groups. Uh, managing access, um, 
that was also uh, fairly challenging. Um, one of the previous projects we were doing, uh, it was like a it was like 500 gigabyte media and stories import that when we imported it and had to apply um, access, we couldn't really use Drupal, you know, recalculate permissions thing because it would just run for three days. And, uh, and I, I, as I remember, even Aqua told us like, you won't be able to do that. So in that situation, we solved it uh, by uh, switching to, we actually did a lot of, um, uh, it was using solar to kind of get the stories uh, and we did some solar query outdoor kind of things to, to say, depending on my level of access, I only get this terms re things returned to me uh, from the back end. So here I think it was similar. Um, I don't remember exactly, to be honest, how we ended up doing it, but um, that was uh, one of the things is kind of managing access, making sure that uh, if I signed up for only these things, um, like maybe only New York news and then global that I don't see news in Texas. Um, creating local stories, uh, that was another thing. The drag and drop UI, I remember we had like a couple of weeks of discussions with the uh, people, I think they were in Texas maybe, uh, with people who, who were kind of the, the project owners on the, the I heart end. Uh, we had a couple of weeks of discovery and I remember going through it and they were saying like, people really love their colored buttons in that screenshots. Uh, and initial, we, I remember doing initial, you know, prototypes. They were like, we want those colored buttons. Um, but also when you're on the desktop, everything is kind of drag and drop by default. And, and that's, um, so I think that was one of the kind of things we had to do and one of the challenges as well to make sure it stayed that way. Um, Challenges and difficulties. Um, second. Excuse me. The timeline, as I remember, we started talking about this project uh, while we were doing other projects. So we had some time to think about it and I kind of already had planned, uh, worked out in my head as to kind of what technology choices we could use. So. By the time we, we got, because we kind of got wind of it uh, because of the group we were working with. Um, but we only had about three months, I think, with even less time for development to actually make this happen before we kind of, our part of it was done and we're rolling off. Um, the, uh, another challenge was getting all the information on, on that news format. That was definitely, I remember, just trying to figure out what all those uh, word characters meant. That was, <laughs> that was a big thing. And then, you know, uh, making it work, um, you know, an acceptable way. Um, integration with Salesforce and AWS. We did not have directly a lot of interaction with it. We kind of just got like here are the feeds and we kind of, it was a by proxy. We said here, here is the, uh, the queue uh, that you're going to push things into. Um, and then we, we basically just come consume that to, to make it work. S3 storage. Um, yeah, UI, UI choices. I think I talked about them a little bit uh, already. Uh, it was a lot of um, back and forth. Uh, and some of it was like having people say, okay, I will be okay with it looking different as long as it still works the way I want and it's still better. Uh, I think one of the big challenges was definitely the, the fact that Drupal 8 was a, a really um, super brand new. Um, there was a lot of things still in beta, a lot of modules uh, weren't quite there um, at the time we were building this. Um, yeah, and selling users on the new UI. How are we doing on time? Okay. Okay, so this is.
Um, this is what essentially the app looks uh, like now. And if you want, let me see, do I have any more slides here? Okay, I could, I could, I just talk about it in a minute. Uh, yeah, so to give you a quick walk through, cut off at the top. It's a little cut off, so I'll switch later. But basically, this is the news wire. These stories here on the left, they're constantly updating. It's literally like every couple of seconds, uh, you see it moving up. Uh, those little red dots, it, it kind of tell you what kind of story it is, whether it's global, uh, local, um, breaking, things like that. Uh, you could see some access here. The wire, the shared stories, in my stories, I guess you could uh, move between. I don't remember exactly how this worked. Uh, and you could filter. There are some built in. Uh, the filtering actually was another uh, big part of it. And hopefully, I could show in the UI. Uh, so you could search for stories as well. Uh, the edit editor part of it was here in the middle um, initially, but I think now everything is kind of on the right side. So you click on the story with load, you could play the audio. Uh, and when we were talking about making like web audio editor, that was the idea that we would be also able to like clip part of this audio. And I tried to find a way to do it, but it was just, the technology was not there. I wonder if it would be possible you know, today. This was only a couple of years ago also. Um, and then we have the script editor. Um, there was a lot of iterations that happened there, as I remember, because um, essentially, uh, uh, at first, the kind of one you drag the stories from one side to the other, and you drop them, and you had a couple of time slots because I might have like a 10 o'clock show, and then one is at 12 30, and one might be shorter to the other. So, th so we actually did a lot of, we changed a lot of things there several times to kind of play with that idea but i think in the end there is a lot of magic and i was talking to a developer who who kind of the, is the front end architect in this now he says he said i call it my magic box now so when you like click add things to script there's a lot of stuff happens and uh, there's a lot of hidden stuff um and stripping of the content and kind of maintains order uh, there are a few other bells and whistles that i uh, hopefully could show in a minute um that um like it in the profile you actually set because this is targeted to people who are going to be creating shows so as i'm creating a show i kind of want to gauge how long each story is going to tell me to send the air so on the user profile you actually specify what is my words per minute talking speed i guess uh and as you drag these stories i don't know why we can't see it this screenshot didn't come out so quite right but there's actually at the bottom it's telling you the whole length of, of what you put in this magic box uh, of how based on your specific uh, word words per minute count um, and then there was other things like share buttons you could go full screen editing I don't know um, some of these were probably added uh, after we kind of rolled off and I mentioned few more things here um uh, one thing was that they were really adamant about is like this breaking story that had to appear at the top i mean this year that would have been interesting to see what these breaking stories would be <laughs> there's like one story at the top of its mark like they don't happen a lot uh, i guess like if there's a hurricane and it's big news or something or maybe amber alert i don't know it kind of shows up um there was weather is always uh, on the interface screen there. Uh, and there's category indicators. These are kind of different things in which the stories can appear. Audio player, uh, and then custom filters. So for some users, I wanted to create. I want to create something that gives me a specific. It's like the ad hoc filtering kind of. Thing. I know that there's a specific group of kind of filters that I always look at and i want to you know grab it um and save that as categories in their profile uh, uh and in the interface you're actually able to do that and then 
you could click on that and it kind of remember and it take you there. And I mentioned the word count. So um, thank you. But that that's kind of end of the slides. Uh, I could certainly show the at least try to show the app. Actually, go from demo time. Um, all right, it's open. One second. A little tricky here, giving it the screen. There we go. So there it is. Um, I guess now it also offers notifications. Um, here you could see the stories. You could actually see the timer going here and it tells you when it's updated last so if you're looking for the stories um, they're constantly coming in and getting updated um, these dots uh, match some of these categories and there's also subcategories and all that gets figured out from that little format that i was showing it's like a box and it was just like mind-blowing to me that you know people just went and they they didn't have like a card that tells them how to tag it they just do it day to day and they know how to bunch of special characters into categorize the story. I guess it's not really surprising, but uh, I was like, this is cool to have a, uh, to glean. Uh, am I still sharing? Oh, oh yes, I am. Sorry. I had a little confusion here. Um, so, yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, so here's your, you can see, I think the, it, it gives you the time, uh, and there's weather. These are the breaking stories. And if you click it, I guess it puts you right in the story. Um, this used to be an editor here. And as I said, now if I click add to script, it just takes it. It puts it in here and then you could basically go um, and just edit parts of it out. Right, you could say that I don't want these three things, but I want the last audio. And I'm not sure what it's doing. I guess maybe there's a lot more audios. Yeah, so there's a lot of them. So maybe you want to say, I want to just have two of them. And what this is doing is this is generating when I go on the air, I'm going to be talking about all these things. So uh, it's about making choices and there's a meaning behind those two you know, uh, greater than signs that I no longer <laughs> remember what I was doing, but you could see here if I um, delete a sentence, it's, this will update the time, the total, uh, you know, talk time of this, uh, you know, talk. Uh, and there's some sharing features, uh, custom filters. Uh, I could click this and basically create any combination of filters I would like to um, create that special filter. And then it's just going to be on the left. Um, so this add to script is what has it to the script and then they could download that's pretty much covers it my stories again I, I actually you know as I was preparing for this talk I was trying to get in touch with uh, folks who we were in the project within who are still there and see if I could actually get some access and um I didn't have a whole lot of time to play around with it again. Um, there's two apps now. This is largely 
talking to um, it's you know it's responsive and it's largely talking uh, through API calls and just like grabbing stuff and sending back. So it's headless basically, and it's mostly just JavaScript and um, and uh, JSON. Um, they have two apps. There's a responsive version as well. I don't know if I could find it. I probably can't. Um, but there's also like a responsive uh, mobile read-only version if I just want to read the stories from the wire uh, on the go. I think this probably also works on the mobile, but um, I think, uh, um, I guess they had a use for the mobile version. So that about um, covers it. Um, I could stop here. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll hang out uh, here um, for a minute. And also, I will be hanging out in the esteemed booth after that for a little while if you want to come talk to me. I'm just going to close this. Sorry. And thank you. Uh, and thank you to esteemed for encouraging me to do this and uh, doing this talk and facilitating. So thank you very much for sponsorship. And thank you for everybody who made this Drupal camp possible also. I'll hang out a couple of minutes in, in case everybody any or anybody has questions. Um, hmm. Honestly, I think I wasn't really involved in part of that decision making, but I think uh, it was kind of overall strategy. Uh, I know it was kind of, it came in into talks several times, uh, you know, either with forms that we integrated into the site. So I think that was like a company-wide strategy to, to uh, integrate Salesforce into there sales process and i know that uh, one of the other projects we did was um uh, the lead gen site and that was like the big part of it is you have this they have 150 markets i think or so or close to 300 markets across us that they kind of cater to and you had this form that went and that was one of the identifiers as the market that they cater to so i think in that situ situation probably uh you know Salesforce uh, works well. All right, we got a couple more minutes here. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thanks, Boris. So much. Thank I guess I could stop sharing now, right? Yep. Thank you. Bye.